Hi, and welcome to another Views from the Valley, your roundup of the news here in the United States, coming to you from the v3.co.uk offices in San Francisco. With me as ever, Sean Nichols. Hi, Sean. Hi, Ian. Right, well, awful lot of good news uh, to cover off, but first off, this is something you've been covering, and this is something which I know the readers are concerned uh, about. Yeah, I think this is something that covered around the time we did our last video, but um, for those that aren't caught up on it, basically Apple, um, what, a few weeks ago, I'd say? Yeah, it's at a conference some researchers showed that yeah. the iPhone was logging location data. That's right. Now, this now this wasn't, you know, your GPS data. They weren't logging your actual, um, your exact part. They, they, were, they were logging the data that was taken to do what's called basically triangulation, which is to take Wi-Fi hotspots near you, mm-hmm. uh, mobile phone towers near you, yeah. and you kind of use that to kind of narrow it down. That way you can cut down the time required to get a GPS location from several minutes to you know a few seconds. Hmm. Um, the problem with this was that it was taking these, this information, logging it, and then keeping that log, and then actually uploading that log to iTunes. Um, now, Apple claims that it wasn't actually you know, harvesting any of this data, and it was being sent back to the company well, or anything. Well, come on, they claimed it was a software bug. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they said that a lot of the retention was due to a software bug, and they've actually today just released an update which... Uh, let's see, first off, stops it from syncing to iTunes, so no more mm-hmm. uploading it to your computer. Um, also, cuts down on the amount of time that the data is retained. I was going to say, doesn't it delete it all when you it, turn yeah, it off? Yeah, it also deletes it when, uh, when, you turn off your com- when you turn off your uh, device. I mean, Google's not the, uh, sorry, Apple's not the only put, you know, company that's had troubles with this, because Android, it appears, also logs location data. Uh, yeah, so yeah. the Windows Mobile and Phone 7. Uh, yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if WebOS didn't, you know, no, no, give no, this information to some degree. I mean, which would lead me to believe that this isn't some nefarious plot by Apple to, you know, take your location and harvest your soul, but... Uh, well, it was interesting that they did file a patent for it. Um, uh, yeah, that was... Int- I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, yeah, the patent was fairly lengthy, but I mean, yeah. I think uh, someone from the EFF actually pointed this out to us, that... Uh, it was a patent for kind of doing exactly what they uh, got mm. criticized for. Yes, yes. It's I don't know. I get the feeling it's one of those software... It's kind of like the Google Wi-Fi snooping case, as mm. far as I can tell. Some programmer thought, oh, that's a really great idea. We'll include that data without probably checking it through. Well, it. I think that's what it seemed to be was a good a good idea, a practical idea mm. uh, that wasn't thoroughly vetted for you know possible security or you know privacy concerns. I was going to say, I mean, Steve Jobs is famous for going through absolutely everything, and if he saw this, he'd hit the roof because I think he's had to recognize how much, how much it really unsettles people. Yeah, well, but recognizing when things unsettle people isn't always uh, something Apple's very good at. <laughs> true, true. Yep, excellent stuff. Well, the update is out. You, if you update your phones, you are now, your location is now safe. I know of at least one person who's going to be slightly annoyed because he was looking forward to tracking his girlfriend's movements. But, um, yeah, I know. Don't even go there. It's a very weird relationship. Okay, and the other big news of today... <laughs> um, Intel made a major, major announcement. They have redesigned the transistor that they've been using in their chips for, for many a year now into something called Trigate technology. Now, a standard um, transistor really works on a 2D level. It's, a, it's an entirely flat unit. This uses a raised gate uh, to give you uh, three processing or three transistor units going through the actual chip, and it scales right down to 14 nanometers. So, and I can't believe actually it's going to say this Moore's law, or Moore's guideline as it should be more properly called, will be adhered to for, the, for certainly the next couple of generations of chips. Now they're saying 50% performance increase, sorry, 50%, yes, performance increase, 37% power reduction. Um, they're able to cram a lot more stuff on there, and it's going to give them a significant competitive advantage. They reckon three years. I think the chip companies are actually fairly smart on this. They should get it licked within about 18 months. But I know you know that Moore's Law is, is something of a bugbear I mean, for it's, me. It's interesting because, yeah, I know we were both um, working for this publication when the high K gates were debuted. Yes. And they were supposed to do this exact same thing and keep Moore's Law going through the next decade. And, you know, here we are four years later and, mm. you know, we need another you know, phenomenal cosmic breakthrough to adhere to uh, the Moore's Law rule. Indeed, indeed. I mean, high-K <clears throat> high metal technology all works all well and good, but again, it's one of you know, it does run into this size problem. If you shrink things down, then quantum effects within just the general electricity flow themselves cause, mm-hmm. cause serious problems. So, I mean, it's certainly in, in, encouraging. I just wonder how, how, as you say, we were told this with high metal gate. Are we now going to be told five years down the line, well, no, that technology is outdated, but look at this new stuff. It'll revolutionize the market. Yeah, that is kind of the nature of the business, though. I mean, True. I don't think any company actually adheres to their 
you know, projections as far as lifespans and everything go. Uh, basically, if somebody says something's going to last two years, then prepared for, you know, be prepared to hear from a year, a year from now that it's completely obsolete and you should buy the next uh, generation. See the iPad for... Gen- <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, the other big story of the last couple of weeks, we've had a new, a new break on now, as you're no doubt aware. Sony has suffered uh, not one but two major breaches. Um, they were their system was taken down in a denial of service attack after they uh, prosecuted someone who'd been hacking around in their systems. Now that was apparently carried out by the anonymous hacking group. However, since then they've identified two major breaches um, of user information in the Sony Entertainment Online network and also on the gaming platform. Um, now the center U.S. Congress is investigating this, and today they published a letter which was sent by the head of Sony America, which claimed that anonymous might have had something to do with the actual file thefts themselves. I've got my doubts about this one because his evidence is that a file was left in their servers labelled anonymous. We are legion. Now, if you're that smart that you can get in there, I can't help thinking you're not going to be leaving for, you know, telltales like that. And if you want to divert attention, it's a great way of getting people to look the other way. Uh, yeah, I mean, this one was interesting because they really, I mean, so, uh, from given what Sony's meant, well, what Sony's actually said, hmm. things like credit card information, that sort of thing, were, I mean... Well, now they actually were harvested. Well, yeah, credit card information was harvested but encrypted. What the problem comes in about, I think it's about 22,000 cases, Mm -hmm. people are using debit cards and non-US debit cards, and that information is available, it seems. Uh, Yeah, so I I guess there's there's a theft risk there. But, I mean, this was interesting in that this, obviously, this was a very sophisticated, very targeted attack. Mm -hmm. But the nature of the information was really not what you'd expect, you know, cyber criminals to generally go after. Yes, you know, harvesting account credentials is, you know... It's big. useful for phishing and spamming, but that's about it. Yeah, and I think if t- to go through this, you know, I guess, an attack this well-planned out, this sophisticated, uh, on one hand, it does seem like something that was designed to embarrass Sony and to really bring this down. And, I mean, that's concept, one okay. possible... I mean, that's one possible... That's one thing we've heard being floated was, you know, this is obviously, you know, very targeted, very sophisticated, which would indicate that it was kind of done to mm. basically, you know, make them look bad, especially in the wake of the... Uh, you know, the, P- the PS3 hacking and all yeah. of that. Um, I mean, it's anonymous have denied it, but let's face it, that's, it's such a, a, well, a weird and, and, group. Uh, yeah, it's kind of the nature know, of anonymous. There's, there's no way that you're going to find it, out. Yeah, yeah, when there's no governing body, it's kind of hard for one person to give a definitive statement on the activities of the yeah. entire group, which is probably how they like it. Mm, true. I have to say, a bit spineless of Sony also to send a letter rather than appearing at these hearings in person, but, you know, that's corporate politics. Anyway, and finally, um, you, may have, you may see uh, around strange-looking containers being dumped outside offices around the world after Cisco has announced that it is joining the containerized server market. And, well, I mean, you covered this. It's, it's basically an entire data center. Uh, yeah, it's basically container. Cisco's whole uh, unified commuti- um, computing mm. platform, so all their networking, all, all their data center hardware, basically crammed into a shipping container. Now, this isn't anything new. No, uh, it's I think Sun was years. one of the first to do this. HP does this, mm-hmm. IBM, everybody. Basically, it's these... It's the standard kind of shipping containers you'd see on a you know a large shipping uh, boat. <laughs> large ship, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, or, or uh, the back of some uh, yeah, you know, trailers. True, true. Uh, so it's that kind of standard rectangle size, rectangle box size. But what interested me about your piece was, yeah, I mean, they said that actually, if you look at the sales for these kind of units, oh, yeah, they're incredibly low. Incre- yeah, I think uh, one analyst we spoke with said there's going to be something like maybe 150 total of these units shipped on the year. But, mm. I mean, this is a market where I think you know, every company kind of wants to have that option, yeah. that sort of idea there. Because, you know, the, the markets that people that do buy, you're thinking things like cloud computing, that sort of thing, mm. they will be valuable customers down the line, and that's just one piece of a larger platform for the company. True, true. I mean, it's certain, I, I must admit, I find the idea of a data center in a, in a, in a shipping container to be absolutely marvelous. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's obviously not that popular. I mean, it's very useful in certain areas. I mean, if you're looking, if you've really got a latency problem, then it can help just well, to dump one of these things. Yeah, down. and things, yeah, so obviously if you have, a, you know, limited office space, mm. or uh, things like disaster recovery, this is a great that idea for be, that sort yeah. of Yeah, I mean, if you're looking to get that sort of thing set up quickly, then you can just get one of those dumped there and you've got your computing Absolutely. needs. Absolutely. Interesting. Okay, well, you can read more about these and other stories at www.v3.co.uk.